Bokatov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. We have very serious breaking news in Israel and as well with America. First, let me take you to the Israeli news, uh, the events that are going on in the Middle East. Israel uh, overnight has had more than 130 rockets fired into southern Israel. Israel has called up 30,000 troops. Uh, President, uh, excuse me, uh, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has requested more than 30,000 troops to be brought up um, uh, to, to deal with the situation on the ground there as well as uh, the, the possible work uh, upcoming with Iran. Uh, there, on, earlier today on Fox News, Fox had this report with uh, Naftali uh, Bennett, who is also on the Security Council in Israel. He is the finance minister uh, for Benjamin Netanyahu. Let's take a look at what he had to say. Yes, now is Israel's minister of economy, Naftali Bennett, from Tel Aviv. He is also a member of the Security Cabinet. Minister Bennett, welcome. Uh, will Israel launch a ground invasion of Gaza to stop Hamas, and should it? All options are on the table, uh, Eric. We are uh, going to do everything to defend our cities, our uh, schools, from the hundreds of missiles that Hamas, a radical Islamic organization, is shooting at our people. We're at the forefront of uh, the free world fighting radical Islam groups like uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, Iran, and we're going to do everything to protect our people. How long do you think this will go on? Hamas shows no signs of backing down. As long as it takes. You know, we had pulled out uh, several years ago from the Gaza Strip. We hoped that uh, the Palestinians would build a city of peace, and, uh, you know, they called it the Singapore of the Middle East. Instead, they turned it into hell, and they've been deliberately shooting missiles at our children, at our families, and this is unacceptable. We know that we're defending the free world, and we're um, very clear about bringing back security to our people. And there's this horrendous, uh, just horrific kidnapping, abduction, and murder of the three Israeli teens. One was an American a citizen, of course. Uh, was that a deliberate provocation, do you think, or just something that was, in, in a sense, serendipity that started all this, or do you think it was actually planned? Well, you know, Hamas is always trying to kid kidnap uh, young Israelis and murder them. They, uh, over the past year, attempted 44 Kidnaps in, kidnappings, and we managed to uh, prevent almost all of them. Unfortunately, one of them succeeded. You know, we're in a very difficult region. We have a fortress of terror in Gaza, another fortress of terror in uh, Lebanon, in Syria, in Syria, in Iran, all around. And Israel has to be strong, and Israel must defend itself uh, very um, clearly. Otherwise, we won't be here. It leaves it leaves Israel no other option at this point here but to do a ground invasion. I know there's a lot of uh, people, including uh, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, and other world leaders that are asking both sides to show restraint. And then, of course, Hamas is saying that if Israel will stop the air raids, they would stop the rocket attacks. Well, that's kind of ironic, seeing as it is Hamas that started the, uh, the escalation of violence in the first place. And yet they're showing scenes, uh, it's very popular with the different news sources, uh, as, as you will see here, where they like to show from the Palestinian side those that are suffering there. But ironically, you get very little bit uh, of information of Israelis that are affected in the strikes against them. Everything is always to, to, to make the Palestinians look like the victim and Israel to be the aggressor which we know is totally contrary. Israel wants to have peace. In fact, Israel pulled out of the Gaza Strip uh, a few years back to let them do their own self-ruling. And it's only turned in, as Naftali Bennett pointed out, it has basically turned the area into a hell, a living hell at that. And so therefore, the Israelis are forced to go in. It really needs to be that Israel takes Gaza back. I, I, I've always been of the opinion that the, that the, uh, the Palestinian people that do not want to live in peace and harmony with Israel, let them be taken to another part of the world. Let them go to one of the other uh, Arabic or uh, Muslim states such as Syria, uh, Egypt. Um, there's so many countries, plenty of land over there that they could have their lives rebuilt there. Um, anyway, so uh, let's move on to further news.
And uh, what I'd like to play you is from RT's news, uh, a Russian channel here, the Keisler uh, report about the U.S. dollar. Take a listen to this report right here. He said that the U.S. investigation into BNP Paribas, which they might uh, find them $10 billion, may encourage companies to stop using dollars in international transactions. He said, quote, we could say that companies would have maximum interest to do the most possible transactions in other currencies. Neuer, who is also a member of the European Central Bank's Governing Council, said yesterday on BFM television, trade between China and Europe, do it in euros, do it in renminbi, stop doing it in dollars. This is an affair that will leave marks. Yeah, that's right. The countries around the world are getting out of the U.S. dollar, and we're seeing more, and, well, the petrol ruble is here. You know, you got the big Russia and China gas deal, which is uh, going to be done in something other than dollars. Now, that's my understanding oh, that uh, the U.S. gets to write checks with their mouth that their bank account never has to cash. The rest of the world is saying, F Matt, we don't want this extraordinary, extraordinary, ex extraordinary privilege. Well, actually, that's an interesting time to look back to because that was in 1969 that Charles de Gaulle's uh, finance minister said that. And um, right then is the first time, the, the most recent time that the U.S. went bankrupt. Remember, they went off the gold standard because they couldn't meet their obligations overseas. Well, the Brits took it. They just uh, accepted the bankruptcy and the no notion that America would never give them back their gold. But the French sent a warship over to collect their gold. Here, it, the same thing cut to, you know, 40 years later. And the America's bankrupt again, even on just a pure paper scheme. How do you go bankrupt with just fictional money? When you listen to the report here that has been done on RT News, it really uh, brings a lot of concern. It's nothing that we've, we've not heard about already, that the United States dollar is on the brink of collapse. But when we're seeing news, credible news sources that are putting it out, this is no longer alternative media such as ours that is, that is telling you that the U.S. Uh, economy is bankrupt, the U.S. dollar is bankrupt, as Keisler puts out in his own report there, he said the U.S. Uh, gold standard went bankrupt in the United States uh, back, I think it was in 1971, uh, something of that area, around uh, President Nixon. And they switched, they moved it over, they didn't pay their debts. England forgave the debt of the United States at that time. And now, though, uh, the United States is declaring that they are bankrupt on paper. Uh, although we're printing worthless dollar bills, it's bankrupt on paper. Now, we have personally seen how these events are transpiring. Uh, we have, uh, in some of the monies that we donate uh, overseas, in particular in one, in one country, the euro, uh, where we have sent U.S. money there to help a family in need there, uh, we have literally watched the U.S. dollar decline steadily over the last nine months. Uh, it has declined rapidly, in fact. Uh, and I... And I I know there's some people would say, you know, diverse your investment, buy uh, euros or buy uh, uh, British pounds or, or the Russian ruble. I can't really tell you what's the smartest route to go because we know the only safe place is in Yeshua. It's in Mashiach, Christ Jesus. It's the only sure safe place. Uh, I, I do think, though, that perhaps divesting a little of our uh, the currency that you may have into uh, other currencies may not be a bad idea. But however, we have always seen that when the U.S. dollar goes down, all the rest of the currencies are affected as well. So if America ends up being declared bankrupt and collapses, then the other nations will follow suit as well. They will collapse. No doubt this is exactly what the Vatican is wanting. This is why they said there needs to be a new one world economic system. And they're the only entity in the world that has the money to be able to do it. So we're, we're living in a serious hour. It's one of the reasons why I said to you over and over and over and over, when Joseph was here, Joseph, God had give him the vision seven years in advance that there was coming a tremendous calamity and he began to set in. He began to store provisions. And I would even encourage you guys for your own selves to store provisions regardless of where you are in the world. I think that's a good idea. Of course, the Obama administration has, has, has signed executive orders that that's illegal for you to do. But you know, you need to use a little wisdom in what's the best thing to do for you and your family. 
And secondly, we must remember that during this time of storing, it was also going to benefit Israel. Well, the only way to benefit Israel is to store in the spiritual food that she's going to need. And this is one why, reason why we encourage you, if you want to do something for the Jewish people to get the gospel to them, this is the hour to do it. I'm Stephen Ben-Danun with Israeli News Live. Shalom and God bless you.